Hey, what's going on? Today we are going to talk about Z-Wave. I'm going to show you how to integrate it with Home Assistant. We go over the USB dongles that you can use. We will also add a smoke and carbon monoxide alarm to the Z-Wave network. And lastly, we are going to set up a very useful automation that you can use with this type of device. So Z-Wave is a wireless communication protocol mainly used for home automation. It uses the mesh network topology so any known battery Z-Wave devices connected to a network will work as repeaters. Z-Wave works on the low radio frequencies so it doesn't cause interference with your home Wi-Fi. For example, in the US, it uses the nano 8.42 MHz frequency, so it is not near the 2.4 or 5 GHz frequency that Wi-Fi uses. Some of the Z-Wave USB sticks that you can use with Home Assistant are, for example, the Aotech Z-Stick Gen 5, the GoControl HUSB ZB1, which supports both Z-Wave and also ZigBee. These two USB sticks are based on the Z-Wave 500 series. However, there are also the Aotech Z-Stick 7 and the Zeus ZST10, which are based on the 700 series Z-Wave. Now, back in January 17, Home Assistant reported some known issues with the 700 series so they recommend they avoid in the series for now. However, since then, there has been updates performed to the firmware. At the time of this video, the 700 series is under version 7.17.2, which it seems to have resolved the known issues. So if you purchase one of the 700 series USB sticks, definitely make sure that you update the firmware. I'm going to leave some links in the description that shows how to update the firmware in some of the USB sticks. The one that I would recommend buying is the Go Control HUSB ZB1. It is a 500 series Z Wave stick. However, it supports both Z Wave and Zigbee. So, if you're planning to have some Zigbee devices, you won't have to purchase another USB stick. All right, to set up the Z Wave integration, connect the USB stick to your Home Assistant and then reboot. If you're using Home Assistant in a virtual machine, you will need to make sure that you pass through the Z Wave USB stick to your Home Assistant VM. If you're using OnRail like I am, stop the Home Assistant VM and then go to the Edit page. Scroll down and under USB Devices, select the Z-Wave adapter. I have the Aotech Z-Stick 7, so for me the name for the USB device shows a Signal Integrated Products. Depending on the USB stick that you have, the name might be different. Click on Update and then restart the Home Assistant VM. When Home Assistant is back online, go to Configuration add-on, backups and supervisor, and then system. On the host, click on the icon with the three dots at the bottom, and then click on hardware. Scroll through the list and locate the Z-Wave stick. Again, the name might vary depending on the device that you have. For the one that I have, it shows here as USB Silicon Labs. Once you have located the USB stick, you want to copy the ID path, which shows as forward slash dev forward slash serial forward slash by ID. You could use also the device path, however, it could cause an issue if you reboot the machine and the device path changes. After that, go back to configuration and click on devices and services. If the discovery feature in Home Assistant found the Z-Wave stick automatically, you will see an option at the top to configure it. So if you did, click on configure. A pop-up comes up asking if you want to set up the USB stick and also install the Z-Wave JS add-on. The Z-Wave JS add-on is needed because it allows Home Assistant to communicate with the Z-Wave network via the USB controller. And the integration is used to add and remove devices from the Z-Wave network. Click on Submit, and after the add-on is installed, another pop-up comes up asking to enter security keys. However, leave it blank, and the Z-Wave JS add-on will generate the keys automatically. Click on Submit, and the add-on will start running. To finalize the setup, add the controller to an area and then click on Finish. Now, if Home Assistant didn't discover the Z-Wave USB stick, click on Add Integration and then search for Z-Wave JS. Click on it and it's going to ask you if you want to install the Z-Wave JS add-on. Leave it selected and then click on Submit. On the next pop-up, enter the path for the USB device and then click on Submit. Lastly, add the USB controller to an area and then click on Finish. The next thing that you want to do is enable Watchdog in the Z-Wave add-on. So if for some reason the add-on crashes, Watchdog will restart the add-on automatically. Go to Configuration, Add-on Backups and Supervisor, open the Z-Wave add-on and enable Watchdog. 
Our ISO Z-Wave is now integrated with Home Assistant, and we can now start adding devices to the Z-Wave network. There are a large number of Z-Wave devices that you can add. For example, smart plugs, lights, bulbs, weather sensors, and the list goes on. The device that I'm going to add today, which is a must-have to have integrated with Home Assistant, is a smoke and carbon monoxide alarm. Then we are going to add a useful automation so you can get notified of an issue when you're not home. In the Devices and Services page, click on Configure under the Z-Wave JS integration. Then follow the directions that came with your device to trigger pairing mode. Click on Add Device and give it a few seconds for the integration to find the Z-Wave device. If the device is connected securely, it will ask you to enter the 5-digit PIN and to verify the device's specific key. You can find that information directly on the device or on the manual that came with it. After you enter the PIN, click on Submit, and if everything went well, the device will be added successfully. Click on View Device, and you can see all the different data that you can get from that device. The smoke alarm has two binary sensors that you can use in an automation. One is for when smoke is detected, and the other one when carbon monoxide is detected. So let's say that you're not home and there's an issue detected, you could have an automation in Home Assistant send a notification to a mobile device and let you know of a problem. Also, if you have cameras in your home, you can add to the notification an image of the area where the problem was detected. So this automation is definitely a must-have so you can take action right away in the event of a problem. To set it up, go into Configuration, Automations and Scenes, click on Create Automation, and select Start with an Empty Automation. Set the name of the automation to something like Notify when there is smoke or CO detected. Then under Triggers, set the trigger type to State. For the entity, search for the Smoke Detected Binary Sensor and set the From to Off and the To to On. Next, create another trigger just like this by using the Carbon Monoxide Binary Sensor. To make it easy, you can duplicate this trigger by clicking on the icon with the three dots and then click on Duplicate. In the Duplicate trigger, change the entity to the Carbon Monoxide Detected Binary Sensor. Everything else, leave it as it is. Scroll down and under Actions, set the action type to Choose, so you can create two conditions, one to run actions when smoke is detected and the other action when CO is detected. Click on Add Condition and change the condition type to State. For the entity, select the Smoke Detected Binary Sensor and set the State to On. Next, we can create two actions, however, the first one is optional. If you have cameras inside your home, you can set an action to take a snapshot from one of the cameras. The second action will send a notification to your mobile device, letting you know of the issue and is going to also include the image taken from the camera. So click on Add Action and set the action type to Call Service. And for the entity, select Camera, Take a Snapshot. On the targets, click on Choose Entity and select the camera to take the snapshot from. Next, you need to set up a location where you want to save the image. If you open your Home Assistant config folder, you will have a folder named www. That will be the folder where you want to save it. So if you don't have that folder available, go ahead and create it. Under file name, enter the path for that folder, which will be forward slash config forward slash www. Then enter the name for the image you want to save. So type at the end forward slash living room image smoke alarm that jpg add another action and set the action type to call service for the service search for notify that mobile app and select the device to send the notification under message type smoke detected in the living room and for the title enter smoke alarm to send the image from the camera along with the notification enter the following under data Alright, so the first option for the smoke alarm is set up. Now we need to add another option for the carbon monoxide alarm. So click on Add Option, then Add Condition, set the condition type to State. For the entity, select the binary sensor for CO detected, and set the state to On. Next, add an action and set the action type to Call Service. The service to Camera, Take Snapshot. On the targets, click on Choose Entity and select the security camera. After that, enter the following to specify the location where you want to save the image, and also the name for the image at the end of the path. Add another action and set the action type to Call Service. Under Service, search for Notify that mobile app and select the device to send the notification. 
Under Message, type carbon monoxide detected in the living room. For the title, enter CO alert. To send the image from the camera along with the notification, enter the following on the data. And that's about it. Click on Save, and if for some reason you have a smoke alert or carbon monoxide alert, Home Assistant will notify you in your mobile device so you can take action right away. All right, guys, there you have it. We set up Z-Wave with Home Assistant. We added a device to the Z-Wave network and created a very useful automation. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next video.